Due to the precious and rare nature of gemstones, most are cut to minimize loss, i.e. increase yield. With some exceptions, that is, and I'm looking at you here, quartz. When we buy a rough gem, we pay for the whole thing, not merely what we get out of it. A 20 carat rough sapphire that cuts a 1 carat stone was maybe not a good deal. There's a general rule of thumb that 20% yield is good, and anything above that is icing on the cake. 20% of that hypothetical 20 carat rough is a 4 carat stone. 20% is 1 fifth. 1 carat is 1 fifth of a gram, so whatever the weight in grams is becomes your minimum goal for yield in carats. If you're buying that sapphire but it's labeled 4 grams, then your yield should be about 4 carats or better. A 20 carat rough sapphire that cuts a 19 carat stone does not exist, and anyone who argues otherwise is probably trying to sell you the stone at a ridiculous price. Why doesn't it exist? Because math. Let's take the standard round brilliant. 57 facets seen the world over in everything from diamonds to sapphires to quartz and whatever. It's the design many people learn to facet with. Because the angles are a constant, their relative positions are predictable and therefore calculable. On just about every facet design these days, there's all sorts of numbers and ratios. HW, PH, TL. Just like every hobby, there's a bit of jargon, but these are fairly simple. Height, width, pavilion, table, etc. The ratios allow the faster to calculate dimensions they should be getting and what to expect as they're cutting. If you cut your pavilion and wind up with a 10mm stone on a standard round brilliant design, then you can use the crown to width ratio to calculate your crown height. If we take this example design by Bob Keller, the crown should be 10 times 0.218 or 2.18 millimeters. If you only have 1.5 millimeters of room left, then you're going to have to cut a smaller stone. Much better to find that out now than after you transfer and start cutting the crown, because if that happens, you either need to make your crown much shallower, which can lead to faster windowing, or you lose your girdle and have to transfer back and recut the pavilion. It's a real drag to have to go backwards in grit and lose the polish on a stone. And you have to keep in mind that 2.18 millimeter is for the crown itself. If you have exactly 2.18 millimeters left, then you still don't have enough space. Why? Because you need to leave room for the Holy Spirit, I mean girdle. Depending on the size of the stone, you need to add 0.3 to 0.7 millimeters to the height for the girdle. The height we actually need for our crown is somewhere between 2.48 and 2.88 millimeters. Probably closer to 2.5. Now let's say you have a perfectly spherical alluvial sapphire with a diameter of 10 millimeters. You cut the girdle outline perfectly and maintain the 10 millimeter width. Your meats are perfect and everything cuts and polishes without issue. Your yield for the stone is 48%. Why? Well, for starters, the SRB is wider than it is tall, so your final stone height is only 7.14 millimeters. The starting volume of your perfect sphere was about 525 cubic millimeters. Your final volume is 249 cubic millimeters. Based on the V to W3 ratio from the faceting diagram. Maybe you don't believe the ratio. After all, where did it come from? Well, you can do a similar calculation yourself by breaking down the gemstone into its component parts. The bottom of the stone is a cone. The middle, where the girdle is, is essentially a cylinder. And the top of the stone is also a cone, but with the top lopped off. You can look up the volume calculations for all those on your own time. Calculating the volumes of all those and adding them up gives us 247 cubic millimeters, slightly less than our ratio calculated volume. Why the difference? Mainly, it's because the sides of our cones are not linear because the facets are at different angles. There's a little extra volume up near the girdle that isn't taken into account in our simplified model. But why then isn't a 40 or 50% yield normal? It's because of the exponential increase in volume with slight increases in diameter. If that perfect sphere was 12 millimeters and you cut the same 10 millimeter SRB, your yield plummeted to 30%. Just two millimeters made a huge difference, and that's for a perfect sphere. In natural stones, there's often inclusions and fractures to cut out, or the shape isn't ideal and extra bits get ground off. In our example, the sphere of sapphire would have originally weighed just over two grams, so we wanted to shoot for a two carat stone or better. With our perfect cutting, the stone would be just under five carats, a great yield. Even if it was the 12 millimeter stone, which would weigh 3.6 grams originally, 
our five carat stone is still better than expected. Now this is a mental math exercise, but the reality is that fasteners have to take this into consideration sometimes before even buying a rough stone. We have to consider the best shape for the rough and what we might get out of purchased rough for the price we pay. And then the price of the rough and the expertise in making it a fantastic gemstone gets transferred to the final sale price. To all you fasteners out there, celebrate every stone, even if the yield isn't the ideal. Whether it's 5 or 50%, every stone you create is a new piece of art that didn't exist before you took it off the top. Now go out there and creatively destroy those beautiful gemstones.